must go back. Are you crazy? I like killing sprees as much as the next guy, but we barely got out of there alive. What about Gamora? She, she made a choice. So you're just gonna abandon her? And Nikki? What if it was Groot? You gonna leave him behind too? Don't talk like that. That's not what this is about. Isn't it though? We're supposed to be a team. Teams don't leave people behind. Tell that to the giant Kratakan army of robots and brainwashed believers we barely got away from! Gamora! Is that...? Yes. How'd you get back? It doesn't matter. I failed. Raker lives. For now. We have to go back. We can't leave Nikki there. What he'll turn her into. Blah, blah, Flark and blah. So you got stepdaddy issues and had a horrible trouble. Ooh, Rocket! What? It's true. Guess what? You ain't the only one here who had it bad. It don't mean we're angling to commit suicide because some pseudo priest nut job is doing surprise nut job stuff. If we go back there, we're dead. D E D, dead. Are you good? I'd rather die with honor than without. Crawled up her butt and died. So, get the Flark out of Dodge? Not yet. You should try to get a hold of Cosmo instead. Great plan, only he ain't answering the passport. Okay, but what choice do we have? We don't have comms. Well, actually, we uh, might have comms. It turns out they weren't as Flarked as I originally thought. Really? Groot should be able to race. Okay. Sounds like Murder Mom's feeling more stabby than usual. Hey! Better not slice through anything in that cargo bay. We ain't restocking anytime soon. I am Groot. Harsh. Excuse me. You all right there, Drax? I am pondering that question. And that makes total sense. After what happened with Nikki and that twisted promise, having to watch the people we love die all over again. My family did not simply die. They were murdered by Thanos. I think I'm... I do not wish to discuss it. Hey, Rocket. You got a minute? I bought something in nowhere to remove that Novacore lock. <laughs> the, the guy said it was a lock disabler. It's not? Piece of junk disabler is what it is. Oh. How do I have to say this again? No shopping for tech without rocket. Fine. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. You don't pay me enough, Quill. Oh, why, yes. I am the handsome leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. <clears throat> uh, Gamora! I was only looking... Relax. I'm not gonna kill you. This time. Okay, good. I, uh, actually... never got a chance to say thank you. For the doll. Oh. <laughs> no problem. I know how you like this kind of stuff. 
It was very thoughtful. I can count on one hand the number of times someone has given me a present without expecting something in return. Wow. Christmas gifts from Thanos must have really sucked. That's putting it lightly. Thanos wasn't the giving type. Everything was a mind game designed to control us. Gifts included. So thank yous aren't exactly my strong suit. Something Mantis says I need to work on. How do you know Mantis? Did she give you one of her weirdo fortunes or something? Not exactly. How do you know her? Uh, I maybe tried to pick her up in a bar once. And how'd that work out? Good. Until she did the creepy antenna thing. I was half expecting her to start chanting, Red Rom, Red Rom. Red what? Doesn't matter. Point is, she's a wacko for sure. A really hot wacko. Who happens to be your friend? Yeah, well, that wacko saved my life. A few years ago. Someone got the jump on me. An assassin. Nearly killed me. Mantis happened to be in the right place at the right time. Seems to have a knack for that. <laughs> yeah. Turns out I had no idea how badly I need someone like her in my life. Up until then, I'd been so... lonely. After the war, the Resistance disbanded. Richard Ryder got busy with politics, and the world mine had no use for someone like me. An assassin? Something like that. Thanos trained me to be a weapon, not a peacekeeper. Once a weapon, always a weapon, you know? Is that why Mantis mentioned suicidal urges? Because I get it. I've, I've been there. I'm pretty sure we've all been there at some point. Let's just say I'm not in that place anymore. Because of Mantis. She showed me another way. A place where maybe I can be needed. What kind of gifts did Thanos give you? Weapons, poison, the metal wire thing you used to strangle people with? He gave us dolls. Once. Stupid, ugly things from Xandar. Wow, okay. That's surprisingly girly. What? I can't be feminine? No, just... I was really sure it was gonna be a knife or something. Like I said, Thanos liked mind games. It was unusual for him to be... kind. We didn't even have a bedroom, yet here were these dolls. Purposeless. And they were ours. Do you still have it? Like, is it in your collection? No. I lost the one Thanos gave me when I was six. She was the ugliest doll I'd ever seen. I cried so hard when I lost her. <sighs> Nebula hurt me. She loved her doll and I knew she wanted another one. So when she came in to check, we started to fight. Bet Thanos loved that. He found us fighting, saw my tears and Laughed. Turns out, the dolls were a lesson on the importance of not getting attached. To help us understand that, he took Nebula's doll and threw it into the incinerator. That's... I can't imagine. Nebula didn't understand why he did it. Only that I was somehow responsible. I started collecting these a few years ago. After Nebula... After I knew I'd never see her again. It's dumb, but I guess I'd do it for her. Wow. Um, I'm glad I bought this for you. And I can promise that there are zero strings attached to anything I give you. You're an important part of this team, Gamora. Uh, thanks, Peter. Uh, truly.
saw you looking at those emergency door control stupid llama thing, you better not try eating them. I hope that was llama speak for I will not chew up your shit. Peter, we need Gamora. Hey. Is that Corral's Galactic War commendation? Yeah. I rescued it from her office. I was planning to give it back to her until... No one could have predicted that Corel was dead. Or that Nikki would be the matriarch. Or that she might be my kid. That too. She's gonna have questions and I don't even know where to begin. How did you and Mom hook up? Why weren't you around? Did you even want me? Ugh, I've become my dad. Do you want to practice on me, answering her questions? Corel never told me about Nikki. She had a chance to tell me three years ago, and she didn't. What happened? You have to promise not to judge me too harshly. I can't promise that. I love judging people. <laughs> Fine. Corel maybe kind of caught me with a kidnapped 12-year-old girl. Yeah, I can see why Corel wouldn't have mentioned Nikki. It's not like that. I didn't kidnap the kid. Yondu did. I told him it was wrong, that we had to give her back, and he disagreed. So I stole the Milano, and I was trying to return her when Corel just happened to intercept me. Mm-hmm. Look, after the Galactic War ended, Corel and I went our separate ways. I rejoined the Ravagers, and she joined the Nova Corps. It's not like we had a future together. When she caught me with the kid, when I saw the disappointment in her face, I knew I had to turn over a new leaf. Even if it meant turning in Yondu. You're the reason Yondu's in the kiln? No wonder there's a bounty on your Earth name. He must have been pissed. Yep. But I'd do it all over again. What gets me is that Corel had plenty of chances to tell me about Nikki. And she didn't. If I had known, maybe... The important thing is that you know now. Yeah. I already told Nikki some of the story. But not all of it. What was I supposed to say? Hey kid, I hooked up with your mom. I might be your dad. Maybe not that. I mean, it was war. I was with the Ravagers hitting Shatari supply chains. You know, pirate stuff. None of us had any long-term plans beyond survival. Especially not kids. Hell, I only met Corel because I heard Earth was in Shatari's crosshairs. Mercury, yeah, I remember. Richard Ryder established an outpost on the planet's surface. An undermanned, undergunned, and horribly outnumbered outpost that didn't stand a snowball's chance in hell when the Shatari launched a sneak attack. Obviously, I had to do something. Nikki would understand that, I think. It was so close, Gamora. By the time I convinced Yondu to help, the outpost had fallen. We thought we were too late, so when Corel and her squad came out of those caves, she was just so... Badass. Her forces had been through the ringer, but she wasn't about to give up Mercury without a fight. That definitely sounds like the Corral I remember. I tried to convince Yandu to stay and help retake the outpost, but he saw no profit in dying, so I stayed instead. We spent hours strategizing together, often late into the night. It took three days to come up with a counterattack, and even then, it was risky. We thought we were gonna die. But you didn't. No. We didn't. And now... Now I have to figure out how to tell my estranged kid her mother's dead. <sighs> anyway, until we get Nikki back, we've got bigger fish to fry. This stuff can wait. True. But when you are ready to talk about it, just be honest with her. The rest will fall into place. Yeah. You're probably right. Somebody makes the right call and gets us out of the way of those church idiots. <laughs> it ain't cowardice, it's common sense. Wait, are you siding with Green Team on this? Yeah, well, a little bit is all we'd achieve before getting brain scrubbed and tied up to faith reactors. Really hope this isn't a bomb. Hey, don't touch 
that. Turn it the wrong way and it could blow. Seriously? <laughs> You're so gullible, Quill. It ain't gonna blow. I mean, its core is definitely volatile as scut, and could melt a hole through the floor if an idiot decided to take it apart. But it's practically harmless. Just need some extra repulsion coils to manage the flaw in the photonic phase capacitor. But will it damage the ship? Eh, probably not. You really go bananas for this stuff, don't you? What the flark is a banana? It's this yellow fruit on Earth that looks like a... Never mind. The point is, you're clearly obsessed with this stuff. Hey, I ain't obsessed. Tech just makes sense, okay? There's order to it. Makes me feel calm. That and it doesn't rip you off like some filthy biologicals I've known. How are you not obsessed with tech? Look at this place. Your room is... Wow, I mean... Wow. What's wrong with my room? You don't even have a bed. I got a bed. It's buried under junk. I prefer to call it a soft shelf. I just don't know how any of this could make you feel calm. I feel stressed just looking at it, and that's coming from me. If Groot didn't do the laundry, I'd probably never have clean clothes. Like I said, tech makes sense. Why do you care so much? I don't know, because you're such a perfectionist. I ain't a perfectionist. The lead scientist on Half-World, Rachmar, he, oh, he was a perfectionist. A horrible, free-bagging, scut and flark, flark and son of a chog! What did he do to you? Oh, what any self-disrespecting scientist does, started a super soldier program. Except instead of using one of their precious blue skins, they decided to experiment on us. Animals. Lesser life forms. But it wasn't enough that he ripped us apart and jammed us full of cybernetic implants. Oh no. He'd make us perform tasks over and over and over. Oh, like lab rats. And if we flarked up, if it wasn't exactly right or up to his flarkin standards, <laughs> He'd shock us into unconsciousness. Holy crap. Rocket, I... It is what it is, Quill. Groot says fixing stuff is my way to make the memory of that stressed feeling go away. Make me feel in control again when I get overwhelmed. I don't know. He's probably right. <laughs> you got grifted. Laugh it up, star pants. <clears throat> I mean, that's terrible. Who was it? A chick. <clears throat> really? I didn't even know you liked girls. She wasn't just any girl. She was a chick. One of them Voldai. Bird people. Mm-hmm. She, uh, she sounds super special. Her name was Tella. And she wasn't just special. She made me feel special. Like I wasn't some freak show science experiment. She bought me a drink. She didn't even flinch at my implants. I just escaped Half-World, and I fell for her. Hard. We've all been there, buddy. Half the girls I've dated have tried to kill me. You should see the scars. Except I didn't know no better. I thought Tella was my friend. And then one day, she convinces me to hack a ship for her. You know, kid stuff. Wasn't even nothing in it for me. I just wanted to impress her. <laughs> yep. Definitely been there. Reminds me of this one time with Vrelnexian. We, uh... You mind? Anyways, I hacked the ship, all right. I hacked it to Scut. The next thing I know, I'm surrounded by a bunch of Badoon thugs. Turns out they owned the ship. While they focused on me, she took off in the ship that I hacked for her. She left me there, Quill. Like I was trash. <sighs> That's the day I learned to think twice before trusting biologicals. They're not all like Groot. Groot really is the first one to treat you right, isn't he? He's my family. You're lucky to have found each other. Especially after... Everything. And then some. I hope you'll see us as family one day, too. What is 
wrong with her? We have to go back. Sure, we're heroes, but there's a limit. Yes, little one. You talk. Hey, Gamora. Go away, Peter. Oh, come on. Just thought I'd check in. That was some pretty heavy stuff you said earlier. Wanna talk about it? I don't need a pep talk. Okay. All right. No talking. Let's sing it out. What? Oh, oh, oh. who's the hunter? Who's the game? You feel the beat, call your name. Come on, I know you know this one. I hold you close in victory. I don't want to tame your animal style. You won't be caged in the call of the wild. Come on, sing it! Shooting at the walls of... Shooting at the walls of heartache. Bang, bang. I, I am the warrior. warrior. Well, I am the warrior. warrior, and heart to heart you <laughs> win. <laughs> See? Just singing. All right. I like that one. Gets me every time. What did you want to talk about? Want to talk about the guy whose arm you just ripped off? There's nothing to talk about. You chopped his arm off. And that's all I did. He's still out there, with Nikki manipulating her with his slick lies and flarked up promises. Making everybody think... <sighs> we can't bring them back. Who did you see? In your promise? Got a feeling it wasn't Thanos. No one. Nothing. It was just a lie. Which is why we need to stop it. Right. I'm working on that. Just... Try not to slash the cargo bay in half. Watch it, Peter. You could fall on my sword if you're not careful. What do you think, bud? Now that Contraxi is gone, what's gonna be the new hotspot for entertainment? Ooh, so swirly. Is that even a plant? According to this, the Collector reported Groot stolen 14 years ago. Ahem. Can we help you? Oh! Hey! Rocket! Groot! Sup? What are you doing snooping through Groot's scut quill? I am Groot. Well, maybe you should mind. Whoa, 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 guys! Groot, I didn't mean to invade your space. Seriously, I would never do that. I was just... Curious about this report thingy I found. <laughs> yeah, the report thingy that just so happens to bring up a lot of painful memories for Groot. Real smooth, Quill. I am Groot. It's not fine. The collector kept you in a frickin' cage like some some kind of animal. As if it weren't bad enough, you lost your entire planet. I am Groot. Fine. Groot says he'll answer your stupid questions. What happened to your home world? You never told me that. What did he say? He says the Shatari blew it up with a an experimental doomsday device. Holy crap. That's awful. Ain't the worst part, Quill. Groot says after Planet X was blown up, the other branch worlds mobilized. But they weren't no match for the Shatari and also got destroyed. I am Groot. Far as he knows, he's the last of his kind. Oh, Groot. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'd do if Earth was destroyed, if I was the last human. I am Groot. He says it's not so bad. He's got us. How'd you end up with the Collector in the first place? How do you think? He stole Groot. I am Groot. Fine, you tell it. I am Groot. He says the Collector found him at the start of the war, in the wreckage of his planet. Oh 
Holy crap. But just a piece. A splinter. The rest got destroyed like everyone else. Just a splinter? Does this mean you can't die? I am Oak. He can still die, but he ain't gonna, cause I ain't gonna let him. <laughs> I'll replant you a million times if I gotta. So, how'd the Collector find you? I am Oak. A drone found him, dormant in space. Guess old Piven scours the galaxy for new specimens. I am Groot. Slavery ain't the same as saving. I am Groot. He insists the Collector saved him by planting him, and also keeping him in a das cage until I stole him, hence the stupid Flarkin report. Is it still active, the report? Will the Collector come collecting? You see any gold domes around lately? Fair enough. I know we don't talk a lot, group, for... You know, obvious reasons. <laughs> but I can't imagine this team without you. I can't change the past, but I can't commit to making the future better. I am... He says he knows, and he's grateful. I can't wait to get out of here. I feel like I've seen this before. Did Groot pick it up in nowhere? Uh, bet our comms array wouldn't be all chewed up if we'd kept the llama in here. One whole arm. That's what? 10% of Raker down? And I say we leave the other 90% alone. Can't say I ain't glad I get to dissect this little marvel. But that's as close as I'm getting to this Flarkin cult ever again. Chew, chew, move over. What are you looking at? Oh no, you ain't chewing through any more of my ship. My ship? <laughs> chew, flock off! Wow, that panel must have looked really tasty. What's it for, anyways? Emergency door controls for the ship. Something a ship owner should know. Hey, do I look like an engineer? You don't. How about you, bud? You doing okay? Hmm. Are you sure? 